screen. Okay, yay. What chapter are we doing? We'll decide. Easy. Uh, they have 27 and then 28 and then 29, 30, and 31. 31 is kind of like what we were going over today in class. I liked it. But, uh, yeah, let's do 31. 31? Yeah, okay. I like that. Yeah. I'm done. Oh, I just realized. I left my umbrella outside this whole time. I hope it's still there. It was a blue one. Yeah, it was out there. Okay. okay. Um, Dun, 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 dun. Okay, you said 31, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. Okay, so this one was just mostly just talking about diseases and pathogens. Does one of y'all want to read some of the slides and just kind of talk about them a little bit? Yeah. Okay. I'm going to be walking to class, but I will participate in this. Okay. okay. Let me pull up the slides and I'll, I can read it. Okay. Do you want to read a little bit? I'll read the first three, I guess, because since I already have it open. So it's basically talking about um, infections transmitted from person to person. And a lot of the ones that, like, I think we talked about, this one is through airborne pathogens. Like yeah. If you don't mind. Bye, guys. So it says aerosols are important for person to person transmissions. And uh, yeah. important for infectious disease. And most pathogens survive poorly in air, and that's why they are transmitted only over short distances. And I'm gonna make Arian be quiet. Arian, yep, mute, mute Arian. yourself. Okay, I think he muted himself. Cool. <laughs> Where did the page go? Ah. I literally lost my slides. Okay, well, um, let's see. It says that different pathogens characteristically colonize the respiratory tract at different uh -huh. schools. And then you see the picture. Yeah. It says there's like some that affect upper respiratory and some that affect lower respiratory. <laughs> yeah. Um, Okay. So, like, the stuff that would be affecting upper respiratory tract is, like, the staphylococcus and then this, all mm -hmm. of those ones. And then the lower respiratory, all the blue, because they have a difference in air speed. Yeah, the air speed. And then it talks about streptococcal, I guess, viruses on the next one. Yeah. So the major species in the group A, I'll let you read that and we'll, I'll make notes on it. Uh, the major species in the group A, streptococci, commonly found in low numbers in the upper respiratory tract of healthy individuals can cause pus forming wounds. Okay. Um, okay. <laughs> so we have the streptococcus Pyogenes uh -huh. um, causes strep throat and can cause infections in the inner ear, mammary glands, and skin. And, and then it and says, skin. Okay. Yeah, in the skin. <clears throat> infections occur if the host defenses are weakened or a new highly virulent strain is introduced. Okay. Perfect. Oh, wow. Look at them. They look so funny. Purple little circles. Isn't yeah. caucus balls? So it's streptococcus because yeah, it's in a line. Yeah. Look at us remembering our stuff from lab. Yeah, it's a spherical chain. Spherical okay. chain. Yeah. Got it. I'm going to draw those next to them on the notes so she knows we know. Okay, I'm going to okay. go to the next one. Okay. Oh, those are ugly. I know the pictures are very. Oh. Okay. Mm -hmm. Streptococcus strands are definite 
definitively diagnosed by culture. Uh -huh. I don't know what that Um, the more violent types of streptococci are beta hem hemolytic. These words are too complicated for me. Yeah, beta hemolytic. And that means like they basically destroy like a the blood a whole blood cell, like the yeah. white and red blood cells. Yeah. Okay, destroys like yeah, hemolytic means that it destroys. Thanks, Thank Arnon. You. <laughs> Thank you for pitching in. <laughs> um, but so both the groups of the streptococci can be treated by antimicrobial agents. But there are some drug resistant strands. Strain strands. Okay. How do we know how long we've been recording? That's what I was trying to see. Uh, <laughs> I have a I have a time for us. So I was thinking till like nine twenty two. Okay. I mean not nine four yeah four twenty two, but I'm pretty <laughs> sure it'll be a little over, so we'll be good. Four twenty two. Um, I don't know how to say this word. Diphtheria and pertussis. Okay, well pertussis. Is whooping cough okay um it's highly infectious it's a respiratory disease and it's caused by infection with bordetella pertussis okay um it i guess it's most commonly found in children it's a violent cough And then, yeah. A violent cough is the main sy symptom of huh. whooping cough? Is yeah. You said a violent, okay. Yeah. That's basically Hence it's called whooping. whooping. Bam, boom, boom. Okay. Um, they right. say seems prevent it and antibiotics. Does it say what antibiotic they use? No, it just says antibiotics. Okay. I like this one because it's kind of like diagnosis and like, I don't know, you know, stuff that I, we actually be doing. Yeah, it's better than any of the other ones. It's better than some other stuff. Okay, I'm um, ready. Next. Okay. Let's see. I'm going to skip the pertussis one. I'm going to go to the tuberculosis and leprosy. Okay. Um... Tuberculosis is transmitted by airborne droplets. And then immunity plays a critical role in preventing it. Okay. Apparently you can get a primary infection and then a post-primary infection. Okay. Primary and post-primary, does it say the difference in them? No. Primary is the initial infection. Post-primary is the reinfection. Okay. Oh, it. okay, okay. Um, oh, here, it does talk about it. Primary infection. Um, hypersensitizes the patient to the bacteria and alters the individual's response to subsequent exposures. Okay. And then what does it say about post priming? Anything else? It just says the post infection is the spread of tubercular lesions in the lungs. Okay. I guess the primary is the initial and then the post primary is where it expands, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yum, 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 yum. And then they prevent tuberculosis from spreading by hospitalizing patients in negative pressure rooms and then healthcare workers use face masks. Keeping and then, patients in negative and what do you say negative uh pressure rooms? Oh negative. Okay. That's to prevent spread. Yeah. Okay. And then treatment 
they have antimicrobial therapy with isonized. I don't know what that means. Isonized. Yeah, isonized. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, David. No Come on, David. Put, put it in. Put your two cents in. <laughs> David's I like, have no idea what that is. Talking and he's like, this dumb bitch doesn't know anything. <laughs> <Nah>. <laughs> okay. Where's Maddie, by the way? Is she in class? Yeah. Okay. She's on my phone right here listening. Oh, okay. With an AirPod in. Cool, cool. Um, it says treatment requires a nine month nine months. Treatment for t tuberculosis is a nine yeah. month process. Oh my god! Yeah. Now I know why she was like stressing it so much in class. Cool. Okay, I'm gonna that one. We're gonna go to leprosy. Okay, leprosy. I don't even think that's real anymore. Yeah, I don't really think it's yeah. Um, the causative agent is M. Lepre. Uh, the most serious form is lepromatous leprosy. It's folded bulb-like lesions on the body, and mostly on the face and extremities. Okay. And then things are caused by growth of the bacteria in the cells, in skin Schwann cells that insulate the nerves and the lesions contain large numbers of bacterial cells. Okay, the lesions contain large <laughs> numbers of bacterial cells. Yeah, it's like the spread of the bacteria cells into the skin. And then it insulates the nerves. Uh huh. That's about that. Yeah, they're like plant nodules, like they have nitrogen fixing stuff on them. Uh, like okay. Kind of like they're just huge sacks of like bacteria on them. Mm. Yeah. Huge sacks of bacteria. I'm putting that there. <laughs> okay, dope. Okay. Um. Okay, now we're going to viruses. All right. Okay, go to measles. Um, measles. Sounds like measles, measles. Often affect children. It's caused by paramoxivirus. Paramoxivirus. Um, it's not as common anymore because of like immunization. Okay, let's see. That's all they really have on measles. How did you get here? I thought you were walking to class. Uh, sorry, I just had someone walk in onto our conversation. Class? Huh? I said, does he not have class? He's just. Oh, yeah, sure. He's just skipping? Yeah, I guess he's just skipping. No, it's at 4.30. It's like... Oh, four. it's at 4.30. Okay, that's in 15 minutes. So you have to walk there? Yeah, but it's like right there. He's in the middle. Oh, oh yeah, sure. You're just going to stay here until the yeah. end of the call. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <clears throat> Anyways, I'm taking like rough notes right now, and then I'm going to make it look I'm prettier. Oh. I'm literally crazy, so. Okay, I'm going to rubella. Okay. Um, it's caused by a positive strand RNA virus of the Toga virus group. Um, the symptoms are similar to measles, uh -huh. but are and less contagious. That's basically similar to measles. Are you playing with? Oh, aw. There's oh a my dog. God, it's a dog. What's the dog's name? Come here. Oh, Kippa. 
What's his the name's... doggy's name? Hipper. What? Hipper? Hipper. Yeah. Uh, yeah. It's a cute dog. He's so <laughs> a sweet. Cute white dog. Cute white puppy. Okay, does anybody else want to read or want me to keep reading? Yeah, <laughs> look, I'll, I'm okay. going to make Ari and read because he just got here okay. in the mood. Yeah, I heard something about negative. What slide were you on? I'm sorry, I wasn't, I wasn't following because I was taking notes. 28. Is that a dead body? Maybe. What slide were you on? 28. 28? Okay. Read. Okay. The mumps. The mumps. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fat baby. <laughs> Bruh. He like flipped this slide 29, and I was like, what the? Okay, anyways. Mumps are caused by paramyxovirus, like measles. They're highly infectious with occasional outbreaks. And there have been outbreaks in recent years, like 2016 and 2017. They really affect adults and dogs. Um, it causes inflammation of the sides of the bones. And, uh, Mm -hmm. An attenuated mumps vaccine, which is a uh, highly effective in preventing this. Yeah. And here in figure 31.21. A very fat baby. A very fat baby. Very fat uh, baby. So he's got mumps. Yeah, he's got the mumps. The measles and the mumps. All right. Chicken pox, also known as Paracella and shingles. Yeah. I'll tell y'all some, well, you read about it, but I like chicken pox. I'll tell them about it. Okay. Anyways. Very common, how is a disease characterized by systemic popular rash? Okay. Caused by Zoster virus disease. Yeah. The herpes virus. The vaccine is currently used in the US. It's mm -hmm. also very highly contagious and transmitted. And it's uh, transmitted to infectious droplets. Yep. So, so Wouldn't they say people huh? when they were like, back in the day, they were like, they would tell you to go spread your chicken <laughs> pox or something? Yeah, they would have chicken pox parties. <clears throat> they yeah. wanted everyone to get chicken pox, and now <laughs> all of them are struggling and they're going to have shingles because it's dormant yeah. in their bodies. Yep. My mom got it. <laughs> Poor girl. Yep. Anyways. Anyways. So. Uh, okay. The so chicken pox. Um, blah, blah, blah. The shingles is the most common. Wait. Most commonly strikes immunosuppressed individuals or the elderly. So. Basically, if you're an old person, you're more prone to have shingles. Mm -hmm. I thought mumps were bad. Our it's more like, like middle aged. Well, you thought your what was bad? I thought my explanations were are worse. You mine bad? Yeah. Yeah. Suck. My explanations are amazing. What are you talking about? I was doing so much better. Come on, keep up. I don't know about that. I, don't know about that. I wasn't even paying attention, but I heard something about negative field something. Anyways, focus. Focus. Vaccine containing concentrated attenuated virus. Exhausted virus. It's available for individuals. The Zaza Vax. The Zaza Vax. <laughs> so basically old people. Old people. The common cold. Okay, common cold. What's the name of the common cold? Well, Rhinovirus. No, that's what they're caused by. That's no, what I meant. I don't think it has a name. I think it's just like a common cold. Like any common okay. cold. Yeah. Yeah. Got it. Tell um, me more. Yeah, so they're commonly caused by rhinoviruses, okay. uh, which are positive sense, single-stranded RNA viruses. There are nearly 150, I repeat, 150 different strains that have been identified. Man. That's a lot, people. That's I just say my body needs to, my body works harder than I do. 100 of the 50. Anyways, about a quarter of all colds are due to infections with other diseases. You can see particular, in particular. <laughs> Sorry, y'all. Someone just screamed. I don't know what's happening. Someone just died. Adenoviruses and coronavirus. Coronavirus? Wait, what? Oh my god! Wait, that's a common cold. Where do you read? Where do you see that? Oh, I'm slide thirty-three. 
Yeah, I see it. Wait, so the coronavirus has been a thing? Or she's like just add that? I don't know. No, she just they, added it, but added it. She just added, but she said she wasn't going to talk much about it, even though she should. That's what she did in class. So most anti antiviral drugs are ineffective against the common cold. Yep. So basically, the common cold is a bad bit. You can only control it. Because she keeps growing, exactly. growing and changing, growing and changing, mutating, just like me, growing and changing. All right. Uh, moving on. Influenza. <laughs> Viruses okay. that contain single stranded negative sense segmented RNA genome surrounded by an envelope composed of protein, a lipid bilayer, and external glycoproteins. There are three, 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 three different types of influenza viruses. Three. Okay, repeat after okay. me. A. A. B. 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 And C. And C. Okay, great. Okay, now the most important one is influenza A. That makes sense. A for Aryan, because I'm important. So that's a good way to remember. No. <laughs> okay. Next. Next. <laughs> All right. Each strain of influenza A means virus can be identified by a unique set of surface glycoproteins. Hema gugolotin. And that's what you are, glutton, man, because <laughs> you eat too much. Right. And there are glutton. Yeah, look. Listen what David said. He knows what's up. Yeah. Each virus has one type of HA and one type of NA on viral capacity and is named for the antigen they contain. The HA antigen is most important in attaching the influenza virus, and the NA antigen is instrumental in releasing the virus. So, like, the H for HA can be like a helicopter, right? It kind of gets <laughs> the influenza virus, like, into, like, you know, where it needs to go. And then the NA for releasing could be, like, I don't know. But just know that H is a helicopter. It gets you where it needs to be. It gets you where it needs to be. Something like that. Cool. That was actually a really bad rip. But things are good. Moving yeah. on. Moving on. Yeah. Yeah. Influenza outbreaks occur annually because of plasticity of the influenza genome. Okay. So we have antigenic drift of yeah. the D, which is a minor change in influenza virus antigen to the gene mutation. So I don't know how to like, oh, yeah, I I remember that. On this. What is that? Candy. Oh, and like shit. Okay. So antigenic drift is a minor change due to gene mutation. Antigenic shift is a major change. In influenza so you can feel like, you know, a drift, like you slowly drift away. So it's like. Oh, minor. okay. Oh. But then when you hit shift, like in the computer, it's sudden it's like, boom, you moved over. Yeah. So yeah. You shift gears to get faster to get a yeah. major speed. Yeah, so major. Yeah. Okay. Makes sense. And that's due to gene reassortment. Okay. Moving on. He's just talking about some pictures. It's talking about how... David, did you understand what she was saying about this in class? Slide 41. The chicken, pig, people. Oh, yeah. Um. So, birds have their own type of, like, influenza virus, and, like, That's we have thought, yeah. our own type of influenza. And, and then it makes, like, a super one. Both get, like, infected in the same host, and then they kind of swap, like, some parts of DNA because it's, like, a segmented... I think <laughs> so they um form something that's like more deadly and that's basically what can birds get infected with the more deadly one the mixture or is it only humans I think it's like well I don't know I thought it was like they were using the pig as a host um and then it was mixed like how he was talking about I mixing the, the gym yeah. yeah no I think the pig was like the host and both of them mixed but then the pig infected humans yeah. With Wait. The, so as it as it shifted from like different hosts, it like reassorted itself to yeah. like be able to infect humans, basically. Well, I mean, it's always been affecting no, humans, but now it's like switching violence. Like, see how it's so like there added in. That, there was the one for the birds and the ones that humans had, but uh -huh. then like the pig or animals or whatever contracted both of them like at the same time, 
So then they mixed and combined and formed the new one, which went back and contracted humans, contracted it. Perfect. And guys, with that, we've made our 20 uh, minutes. We did? Great. Yeah. Okay. Can I get a, a hip hip? Hip hip. Hooray. 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 Okay. okay. Bye. Bye, guys. Are you going to send us a thing? After? Yeah, I'll figure it out. I'm gonna okay. enjoy my vacation. So yeah, you enjoy your vacation out <laughs> there on the islands. Have fun. I okay. can hear Bob Marley from here. <laughs> I see you tomorrow. Okay. Right, Let me figure out how to stop Bye. recording this. 